We welcome you to sunny South Florida with another Dade County matchup. The Booker T. Washington Tornadoes take on the Chiefs of Carroll City tonight. Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ryan Stout alongside Glenn Stout tonight with another fantastic high school football game for you. Weather is perfect. Glenn, how you doing? I'm doing great. It's great to be back down here in Trash Pal in Dade County, Florida. It's the first time we've been back since we were here with Booker T. Washington Glade Central game. That was a playoff game way back at the, uh, well, the, almost the end of the year last year. Uh, we've got some great plays, players for you tonight, some impact players for you tonight. On the Carroll City side, our impact players tonight are going to be Ronaldon Ellington. He's an impact player. He has one TD, 147 yards, and he's second in the district overall. We've got Steven Newbold. And sorry, Ronaldon is number two. Number three is Steven Newbold. He's an impact player as well. He's a wide receiver and a strong safety. He has one TD with a 51 yards total in receptions. The third impact player tonight is number 12, Steven Calvert. He is the quarterback. 233 yards, one touchdown, and three interceptions. And last but not least, the scholar athlete tonight, number 13, Chantel Shea, who has a 3.8 GPA. Harold Barnwell, the coach of the Chiefs, come in tonight with an 0-2 record. They've only lost two games by a total of five points. Overall record again, 0-2. They're in 6A District 16. They're in Class 6A. Two games, they've scored 28 points, and they've been scored on 33 points. Now comes the mighty, mighty Tornadoes. Tornadoes, the defending national champions, until they get knocked off, I still have them as a perennial number one in the country. Overall, 3-0. and They've been all over the country. Head coach Tim Harris, Jr., fathers at University of Miami now in the 4A District 8. Class 4A, they played a total of three games. They've scored 97 points, and they've been scored on 48 points. Their impact players today are number three, Maurice Alexander. That is the quarterback. He's got eight touchdowns, 481 yards, and he's got 50 yards rushing. He's got number 19, Vaquan Small. He's a wide receiver. He has one touchdown and 102 yards. And then we go to the big guys on the line, number 78, who dominated last week, Ben Torellia, number 78. And our scholar athlete tonight, none other than number one, Terry Jefferson. Terry is our scholar athlete with a 3.5 GPA. Ryan, this is a game that is a crosstown rival. We've got a 3-0 against an 0-2, but an 0-2 team that's only lost by five points and one game was only one point we've got a booker t washington game that is gone coast to coast well east side of the coast to virginia showed those guys how to play a little ball then down to georgia showed them came home last week that big matchup against central we were here last year it got down in the last few seconds same thing one point game central could have kicked they went for it they didn't booker t takes it well like you said glenn big time game tonight the Tornadoes once again take on the Chiefs. This is high school game day brought to you by Bleacher.com. This is HSBN live and we're bringing it to you all night. Stay with us. Take a knee. No, that's just he will take. He's going to snap, punt it. He's at the 50. He's at the 40. Can he stay on his feet? Well, we're back to live action. Here goes the kickoff. First game down here at Trash Pal Stadium. Booker T. Washington receives. The Chiefs will kick off from their own 40-yard line. And watch out, folks. It may be kickoff. He kicks it short to the up man. Takes it at the 23. Brings it back in the middle, but he fumbles on the ball. His knee wasn't down, and the Chiefs are going to take it over inside. Booker T. Washington, 23. Check that. Referee is saying he was down on his knee and Booker T will maintain the ball. That's why those up men are up for a reason to make that wall. 
never good to start off the game with a turnover. I know that's gonna jack up these tornadoes tonight with, uh, with their first possession, not being able to come out and put some points on the board. I know that's gonna be tough for the tornadoes, but with the conversation the ref are about to have, we're about to see exactly what happened. And to add to that, once again, we wanna thank our sponsors tonight and all of our viewers coming all across the nation. Bleacher.com, we thank you and we thank all of your viewers for tuning in tonight. Once again, Florida Gridiron Preps, thanks for tuning in tonight. Always appreciate what you do for HSPN and keeping dreams alive. FloridaHighSchoolFootball.com, sending all our love that way to our Florida fans. And FloridaVarsity.com, one of our newest sponsors tonight. We welcome all the viewers tonight. Once again, always, we show our love to the Keeping Dreams Alive Foundation, what makes it all possible for us to be able to do this tonight. Stealth Rating. Stealth Rating, the number one rating system for athletes flying under the radar. And last but never least, playingtherecruitinggame.com, bringing the corporate world, the corporate recruiting structure to these high school student athletes. And we thank all of you for tuning in tonight. And let's get into this game. Wow. Well, Booker T, they <laughs> ended up getting the ball. They sure did, and they threw, Alexander threw about a 20 yard one over the middle. He's gonna run a zone read this time, right off the right hand side. Picks up about nine yards, that's a nice run. He went for it right up the numbers. Cut in for a skinny post on the first pattern when you were talking, Ryan. Over the head about five yards, adrenaline was pumping. Bring up third down and short. Trips down here the bottom side and single coverage on top. See if Alexander picks it up. Zone read, first down, tornadoes. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Glenn. Miami Dade football, it's always great to be back. Back in Trasbal Stadium, I know it's been a while, but I'll tell you one thing. What a beautiful breeze we have. And these bands are going nuts. We got the Carroll City Band literally right on. That's mean, why we had to get headsets coming into Traz Pal and want Miami, Miami football. You've got to have those headsets on or you never hear yourself. First and 10 at the 40 yard line. Alexander is going to take it around the right side. It might have been a miscue. He's still going to pick up three, four yards. And one thing about Alexander, had a chance to hang out with him this week at practice. What, what a great athlete, what a great student athlete, I should say. I mean, coming in as a transfer, he's done a great job so far as the leader of this football team. I'll tell you three things about him. His speed, his humbleness, and his ability to make big plays. Second down and seven, he's gonna throw a quick one to the inside. It's caught for a first down. That was Shaq Green, wide receiver senior. Picks up 15 quick ones. There was nobody, no safety coming up on that play. Beautiful throw by Alexander. He read it perfectly. Chiefs are running a cover two. Left the middle of the field wide open and Alexander read it. He's gonna throw a quick one out to Chuck again. This time he's not going anywhere. Well, for those viewers that have watched the Booker T. Washington game before, as you can see, though Coach Ice isn't on the sideline this season, you still have a young man, his blood, and still has his name. You're going to see the same offense out here today. Not much change. The offense, they're going to spread it out. They're going to make big plays tonight. On the Chiefs 40 yard line, fakes his own read. Quick one out here to the left hand side. Nice tackle, good wrap up. That's Green again. And he's going to stay in bounds on that play. He's going to keep the clock running. Picks up about five yards, Ryan. He brings up third and five. Number six, Shaquille Green on the reception. I'll tell you one thing. For those that have seen Booker T. Washington play so far this season, not much has changed, though the roster numbers and names have changed. The wide receiving core for Booker T. Washington is like none other. They've moved around a little bit. Player move here, player move there. Our impact player came in from Jackson. He's a, got it right across the middle. Breaking it down to the 20-yard line. There's a penalty flag. It's going to come back. 
down all the way into the eight-yard line. I'll get his number. That's number 19. That's one of our impact players, Vaquin Small. And that's a pickup of 20, but they're going to bring it all the way back. I believe it's going to be a spot foul. We're going to check with the refs. Great play call by the Tornadoes. Little slip screen inside. Got the receivers downfield, making sure they're picking up their blocks. Come across the field. Great play. Great pickup by Smalls. That was a spot foul over the middle of the field right at the 25-yard uh, line against the Tornado. So instead of first down and goal, it's going to be third down, and we'll see where they mark it off. Back to the 35-yard line. Third down and five, it's a do-over. Lining up in that trips. Single coverage on the bottom side with a single back in the backfield. To Mark Walton back there, number two. Actually, it's not Walton this time. Three-step drop, he's looking to the middle over the line. It's a great catch, but drop. And you got to make those kind of plays. Big hit. He had it in his hands. I, I already know, as a wide receiver, when you're running a slant route, I mean, you're crazy not to catch it and, and want to get down right away, knowing that you got footsteps creeping up on you. And unfortunately, put the ball down right there. He's got to make that catch, though. That was a big hit by the safety. I'm not sure if that was Calvert or Javon Henry, but he came up and... Her receiver heard footsteps. They're going for it, fourth and five. Now they're going to get the five and automatic first down. You've got offsides by the Chiefs, unless he was drawn off. The nope. Great job by the Tornadoes. Discipline is key. Discipline in this game. Not only is it a big time game, I, I, I believe any Dade County matchup is a rivalry matchup but discipline and special teams will be the difference maker in this game today give us off the left hand side picks up about three yards that's number 13 Trayvon Johnson that's a junior Tackle made by number 56, Terry Tackle made by number 56, Terry Schroeder. Zone read, Alexander's going to keep it this time, try to make it to the edge. He makes it down to the 20. Hit hard outside, close to the first down. Great job by Alexander. The only tips I would have for him is to make sure the ball is on the opposite hand making sure it's pointed towards the sideline. Therefore, they get a helmet, come in real fast, he fumbles it, it's gonna go out of bounds. And at the end of the play, I know you're excited. You know, the pump is going, the bands are playing. Get out of bounds, young man. Yeah, and he's not, right. Drop, drop in your shoulder this early in the game, right. you wanna stay healthy. That's what I was gonna and say. And here he goes again, on the move. Rolling out to the right-hand side, he's got all the time in the world, he's gonna turn it up. Well, he's going to drop it, and they're going to hit him. He gets almost close to the first down. And I'll tell you one thing, that sure does look familiar right there. One thing we know about the Tornadoes is they're not scared to open up in the pocket. They start taking off. I know you guys remember last year, Treon Harris. If he got outside the pocket, everyone was holding their breath. Congratulations, Treon. Two touchdown passes this past weekend for the Gators. Trips to the bottom side. Zone Reed, he gives it up the middle. Big hole. Got the and first I'll say one thing. This is a great progression right now. Though he had a couple penalties early on, I think this is exactly what Booker T's plan coming into this game. I mean, they've had a great job. They've done a great job running, and they've thrown a, a couple quick passes. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they score right here. Well, they've got 13 back there, Trayvon Johnson. Um, you were down with them this last week. Is Walton injured? Walton, he didn't practice the day I was out there. I don't know if he's injured, 
but he wasn't practicing that, that day, and it doesn't look like he's out there tonight. No, it doesn't. Well, that's a loss from Alexander. He faked the zone read. He was going to try to get to the edge, and there was no way. He wasn't getting there. Well, Alexander definitely has the speed to get outside the pocket. He's going to make some great plays tonight. He's just got to make sure he stays healthy. Yeah, he's got that adrenaline flowing. Uh, he doesn't but want to drop his shoulder. But believe it or not, they have the ranks. A couple backups that uh, they could really step up to the plate that I got a chance to see out of practice. Post pattern, touchdown. 11 yard, made it look easy. I don't know about that defense for uh, Carroll City, number seven. That was number I mean, 19, our impact player, Vaquan Small, on 11 yard skinny post, right on the hash. They love the hash. Guess where Treon threw his quarter first touchdown right at there. the Gators, right on the hash. Right there. You throw it down the middle, you, get it, you give your receiver an opportunity to, you know, to make a play, and he did. I'm not too fond of that defense right there out of number seven for uh, Carroll City. He's got to, against these wide receivers, you got to step up your game. He's going to have to press them because they're going to come after him. And once again, high school game day brought to you by Bleacher.com. If you're just tuning in with us for the first time, this is Booker T. Washington against the Chiefs of Carroll City High School. Big time South, or I wouldn't say South Dade, Miami-Dade matchup here at Traz Powell Stadium. Loving this weather. Nice up high. The sun, we don't <laughs> have the sun in our face. Miramar was murder. We were down at Miramar, watched the Patriots against the Patriots last week, and it was 120 degrees, but that was one heck of a game second half. Absolutely. American Heritage didn't start. Uh, their star player, I should say, Torrance Gibson, comes in late into the game. They make changes for Miramar. They change out their quarterback, comes in, does a great job, puts some points on the board. I think American Heritage, it was either American, it was either coaches or Torrance saying, coach, you got to get me in the game. We can't lose this after the loss they had at St. Thomas Aquinas. Yeah, I think all that torn uh, rib story they gave us on the way up was uh, was the real deal was they sat him down because he needed to think about it a little while. And he got to think about it a while, but we're down here in Miami-Dade, Dade County football at its best. Fast, speed, coaches from all over the country. You can see on our website, hspnsports.com at the bottom. Those impact players are down there. You can click the link to them and go right to their huddle tape or the Scholar Athlete as well. They're right there on our page. And we don't want to forget to mention, as we do this live broadcast, wow, I just have to mention what Out of the end zone. That was outstanding. Out of the end zone. Out of the end zone. That was outstanding. But I don't want to forget to mention our main man down on the field right now, Bob Webster. He's How you doing down us, there, Bob? You know, he wants to, he's gonna bring us, I don't think he's hooked up yet, his mic. But he's down on the field. He's going to bring you the coverage <laughs> right from the sideline. It's going to be nuts. We're going to test it out. We're going to see how they're doing down there. Because I know it's it's crazy up here. I can only imagine what's going on down there. I'm just excited. We got the technology running and we got some speed up so we can put some we can put a game out. All right, here we go. We got quarterback Stephen Calvert. He's an impact player. First offense from the scrimmage. He's going to throw a quick one out here down for no gain at all. He throws it out here that ball up. to another impact player, Steven Newbold. And that's going to be a loss of about a yard and a half. Yeah, he's got to get that ball up. I understand it's his first play from scrimmage. He should have had enough time on the sideline to prepare his arm for this situation. But, hey, we'll get the kinks out early on. Well, he's got the adrenaline pumping. They're running a similar formation. Trips to the bottom side. He's got single coverage up top. They're pressing. To draw up the middle, it's not going anywhere. Matter of fact, he lost another two yards. Well, you mentioned earlier on, as soon as we got on live, um, that Carroll City, unfortunately, they've lost their past two games. Is it? They lost but their past two games by a total of five points. By, right, but only a total of five points. I don't know. You know, they haven't put many points up on the offensive side, but 
I'm sure they haven't played a defense like the Tornadoes yet. They've only scored 28 total points. And, folks, courtesy of, wow, that was a nice little slant pattern. Picked up about 10 yards. He's back to about third and, well, it's going to be fourth down. They're going to have to punt. But as I was saying, the, the stats are courtesy of, of uh, Bobby Jackson up there at Florida gridironpreps.com thank you Bobby for getting those stats for me for this game for HSPN Sports we got them all working and let me tell you the best bloggers in South Florida they're on our team and we're happy to have Mike of FloridaVarsity.com join us this week these guys are the hardest working bloggers in the country and they're in the best place wow and terrible and a terrible like I said earlier on What's going to make a difference in this Ooh. game, which makes a difference in a lot of games in Dade County, is our special teams. He didn't even kick it back to the line of scrimmage, Ryan. That's unfortunate. Um, hopefully they can work that out. Hopefully they have a you want to give punter. You want to give the Tornadoes first and 10 at their only tr at your own 26-yard line? It's going to be a 50-point half. Be very careful. I don't care crosstown rival or anything. These guys are explosive. Ask, ask the teams of Virginia and Georgia. Well, we got some fancy motion going on here. Came a trips in a bunch of trips, and he's got empty backfield. Alexander takes three steps, and he's, he's got a wide up, open right up the middle the field. Yep, he did, and he took off and picked oh up about gosh. nine. And a wide, wide receiver, wide open down the field. I mean, that post pattern was wide open. That safety, you could tell that safety was drawn. He's reading the quarterback's eyes all day. He's getting drawn off over to the side. That's the perfect pass. Game nine, second down and very short. Changing up the formation a little bit now. Twins, single back in the backfield. Alexander's looking left all the way. The it's middle. a post pattern for a touchdown. Oh. 16 yards. And the middle of the field is wide open. He did it to the right side last time, and he threw the post to the left side this time. I mean, if you're not going to have a safety up top, you got to tell these defensive backs, you got to jam. You got to jam to the outside. You got to get these guys to go outside. You can't give up the middle because they're going to throw there all day. We haven't seen anything more than, what, a slant route and a post route? That's it. Well, the one first one, first play of the scrimmage was a seam down the uh, down the hash as well. Kick is up. It's good. 14 Boom. quick points. And that cannon will get everyone in this <laughs> box every single time. It sure will. I know it's getting our camera guy. He jumps every time. Hey, one of the things we look at very strongly with Keeping Dreams Alive Foundation and HSPN are our scholar athletes. And again, no scholar athletes. Booker T. Washington is going to be a Terry Jefferson. Terry, congratulations. Keep it up. He's a senior with a 3.5 GPA. That's fantastic, Terry. And then the other impact, I mean, scholar athlete for Carroll City Chiefs, Chantel Shea. Scholar athlete with a 3.8 GPA. Fantastic jives, guys. Once again, high school game day brought to you by Bleacher.com. Got a heck of a game tonight. And once again, like I said before, we got a special guy down there on the field right now, Bob Webster. Good to see you. Bob, how you doing? Man, it's beautiful down here. We got about a 15 mile an hour breeze. You don't get any better than this. How's, how's it look down there from a game speed perspective? It looks a little quicker than my day, I can tell you that. But yeah, this is this is super being on the field and seeing it. Well, hey, Bob, we're going to check in with you as soon as we can. We're going to get back to this game, and we're going to get back to this kicker and watch him kick it out of the end zone once again. We'll get back to you. My goodness. Out of the wow. end zone. Not even into the end zone. Out of the end zone. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, that's Bob Webster bringing you action right from the sidelines. Got new technology out today. We're pretty high up in the booth. I know it sounded a little fuzzy, but that's all the action 
going down. We're going to get Bob back on as soon as possible for you all. Well, the Chiefs have the ball again, this time out at their 20-yard line. Our impact player, Calvert, QB, needs to do something to get his team rallied up, playing against, if not the best team in the country, which I'm, I believe it is, until they get knocked off. He fakes. He's going to go for a quick screen over here. Number two eludes one player. He's got some yardage out to the 35-yard line, and that looks like that's Ellington. One of yes, our sir. impact. I'm sorry. That's number yes. three. I believe that. Nope. That was number two. Ellington. That is Ellington. For our graphics, we'll have to get on our graphics people. They have him listed at number 22. Ellington is number two tonight. One of our impact players, as well as Stephen Calvert. First first down of the game for the Chiefs. Under center. Double pass down the field, wide open. He oh. under throws him. Double oh pass. Oh, my goodness. We're getting a little trickery going on here this early on in the game. I don't know, Coach. What's that telling you? It means you got to pull it out of the bag trying to get it in the zone. So he better have a whole bunch of them in the bag. Oh, my goodness. Or else the rabbits. <laughs> you don't want to turn it into a <laughs> track meet. <laughs> Pulling the rabbits out of the hat. Maybe a little too early. In Second the game, down and but. 10. Calvert looks to the sideline, changing the play. Going to get called if he doesn't get it off. He's throwing another one out here, and it's not going anywhere but into the players on the sideline. That'll bring up third down and 10. Doesn't have much time back there. That ball, it looked like he threw it off his back foot. He's trying to audible. I don't know how much time he has back there or better yet how much time is going on in his head as a quarterback I know he needs to understand how to slow the game down and it didn't look like he did right there here comes a corner blitz nope coverage a little out oh. pattern probably should have been caught it still would have been short of a first down two yards short they're going to punt again Ryan and if this punter doesn't get it out of there it's going to be a quick seven points for the tornadoes again this young man has to get it out of and into the other end of the field in the Tornadoes territory. And I'm a, I was looking at the DBs. They're playing press coverage, Tornadoes on the Chiefs, and they're not giving the quarterback, Calvert, too much to look at. He kicks it this time probably less yardage than last time. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I had a chance to go out to practice over at Carroll City. Calvert, he's got great arm strength. And I don't know if you had a chance to mention, but as an impact player, he's also a commit to USF. He stands tall, he's got great size, he stands tall in the pocket. I don't think he's played against this kind of speed. I'm, I'm sure Dade County, you're gonna get a lot of speed down here, but this is a tornado defense that's gonna bring an F5 all through the stadium. So he's got a lot to prove tonight. Well, the tornadoes are moving around. They're gonna run a quad on the top bunch of trips and single coverage you're going to Alec Danner's going to throw back he looks to the middle he pumps he's taken off up the sideline to the 45 down to the 30 and he slides into the 30 right at the 30 yard line and, and one thing one thing I forgot to mention on that last play which I wanted to I don't know if you notice but they're on the right hash he tried to throw that out route which could have been completed on the left side of the field not only is that a college style throw but he threw it all the way across the field. It should have been caught. And right there, as you can see, Alexander once again moving around outside of the pocket, making plays when they count the most. But I don't know about you, but those DBs, they look like, hey, maybe 25 yards, 30 yards back. Yeah, they're playing 15, five to 10 to 15 off. Penalty flag. With this quick, with this quick style offense that Coach Harris brings to the table, I mean, I understand your concern when you got your DBs lined up 15 yards back, but I mean, you got to come out of your, you got to come out of your stand slow and low. These guys are going to hit these quick slants all night. They're going to hit these screens. They don't have enough time. I mean, these guys, this is Booker T. Washington. Hey, the only thing that's going to slow down the tornadoes are penalty flags. <laughs> Here we go, first and 10 from the 30. 
Alexander throws a quick one to the left-hand side. That's number 85. And honestly, I just Landers. don't think... I don't think these DBs um, have enough experience getting out of their T-step as fast as these guys are coming out of their routes. No, and they're pure routes. They're pure cuts. Second down, it was only a pickup of about three. Alexander takes a three-yard drop. He's going to scramble a little bit. Throws a wide-open receiver because they're running all over the place. And they're going to call catch. it complete. Picked up 17 yards down to the 13-yard line. They're going to call it complete. And it looks like they're playing uh, defensive-wise. Looks like they got all defensive backs dropping out. Looks like more of a cover four type look, which is opening up the middle of the field. Once again, these tornadoes, they're dangerous outside of the pocket. Give us his own read. Picks up about three, four yards. Referee's giving him five. Maybe the last play of the first quarter. Second down and five. Six yard line, zone read right up the middle. Hits it hard down to the, close to the goal line. They're gonna stop the clock real close here. And with 14 points already on the board, it's gonna be tough for a Carroll City team to try and recover with a 20 point, 21 point lead. Right up the middle, touchdown, mm. Tornadoes. And a big time hit by that defensive player. We'll try and get that number for you. Looks like number 51 on the hit, but not enough to stop him from scoring. And the Tornadoes put another six on the scoreboard and hopefully convert this extra point. That was Johnson on the carry for the touchdown. And number 52. Not on the roster. Now we're gonna get some dirty laundry on the field. Looks like an offsides on the defense. Yes, sir, it is. Offense on the defense. What is Booker T gonna do right here? Are they gonna kick it? I'm sure they will. And it's through the uprights. And once again, Booker T. Washington Tornadoes put some more points on the field. And can Carroll City come back first quarter? I believe we got maybe a couple seconds left. 6.3 seconds left on the clock. And as they get ready to kick the ball back off, we are going to acknowledge our sponsors tonight, Bleacher.com. Florida Gridiron Preps. Florida High School Football. FloridaVarsity.com. Keeping Dreams Alive Foundation. Stealth Rating. And last but never least, PlayingTheRecruitingGame.com. Well, six. Point three seconds left in the first quarter. I know where this kicker's gonna put it, so there won't be any time taken off until they come out to the 20 yard line, that's a given. This young man is uh, definitely a soccer player. Absolutely, I mean, I know we have a pretty good breeze up here, but he's put the last two out of the end zone, I believe. That's correct, if you're watching from anywhere around the country, we're um, not far at all from the beach, a few miles. We're up very high in an old stadium. And that ball is kicked out of the end zone again. Well, right to the back of the end zone. And they're going to get a little time left on the clock. 6.3 left on the clock. And the Chiefs maybe get one play. Wow. 
That was know. a very fast quarter. That was a, that was a fast quarter. Only one or two penalties. Tornado scored on every possession except for one. So you've got to watch out. It will get out of hand if you're going to allow them to score every time and you're not going to put any points on the board. And I'm pretty sure Coach Aubrey Hill made that clear um, earlier on this week during practice. Everyone has a understanding coming into a game against the Tornadoes. Coach Aubrey Hill is doing great things over at Carroll City as the head coach and uh, has a great coaching staff. Never felt so welcome before to a practice in my life until I went down to Carroll City this week. That's nice to hear because they don't know that uh, you're putting in the work, Ryan, Monday and Tuesday down to see these players, uh, getting those headshots and getting them all over the social media. And then you've got Bleacher, Florida High School Football, Gridiron, Florida Gridiron Preps. You've got, you know, Florida Varsity that's, that's uh, giving the exposure to these young men all over the country. Uh, we're blasting this to college coaches for them all over the country. So, you know, it's all about the kids, and it's good to see that you're welcome on the campus because they should be because we're here to help them. First down and 15, nice little skinny post. Wow. And number 13 on the reception, our scholar athlete for tonight's game for Carroll City. Makes a great play. Say, scholar athlete. 3.8, and that was two That was two receivers in the same spot. Yes, sir. And they, I don't know if that was, um, I don't know if that was what they were trying to accomplish, but hey, the outcome was a success. That's gonna give them a first down, and that's gonna take us into the second quarter. And as we do, we're gonna take a quick break. Once again, this is High School Game Day, brought to you by Bleacher.com. This is HSBN South Florida, bringing to you live all night long from South Dade. Stay with us. Back to live action, Carroll City Chiefs have the ball at their own 34, biggest gainer of the day, and wow, he is mauled. Big time hit by number eight on the defense from the Tornadoes. Hooker T, number eight, James King, lays wow. the wood. Kind of looked like a uh, familiar type of hit coming off the edge. Mr. 99, last season, Chad Thomas, which is at the U this season. Second down and 14. Nice catch, picks up about 20 yards. Another skinny post, Ryan, on the hash. And they've shown some exposure. That's another reception by Victor Tucker, number 17, a wide receiver. That's a sophomore. That was a great pass and a great reception. Great matchup right there. Right down here below us at the 50 yard line. First and 10, the Chiefs are on the road. Another one over the middle, right in and out of the hands, and oh my goodness. And you can hear, oh my goodness, that was going to the house. Up in the box, we're up in the box right now in the media section, but it's wide open. You got the Booker T coaches to our left. And they the know Carroll it. City coaches, <laughs> all you can hear, moans and groans. They know that it. Stuff. You cannot afford to not make those type of plays. Oh boy, they need the points, and that would have been six. There's no doubt that would have been six. Middle field was open. Clavert's got him back, single back in the backfield, twin set. Gonna go with a draw. Grab at the middle, he may pick up four or five. He's still working it. And I think that's what they need to do. They need to just, it, it's not all about the big play. Don't worry about taking it down the field. They're doing fine, some great slants. Nice draw play. The screen play has worked. It's been outstanding for them the past couple times. They've run it. Needs a first down here. Third down and five. They've got to desperately get points on the board on this series. Cannot leave it, put it back in the hands of that punter. 
dangerous. Swings it out to the right side. He's got the first down. Picks up about 10 yards. Nice little scat back. Great job. Great job by that quarterback. I'm going to say that was the play call. You had the wide receivers take off vertical down the field. That was if number not, Go ahead. That was number two, Ellington, our impact player. He's a running back. He's a senior. That's the second first down in this series. He's going to look over the middle again. Tripped. And fell. He was open. He just tripped and fell. He was. Hey, I got to tell you, folks, Trash Pal Stadium, the press box. I walked in here tonight. I saw this baby blue floor, Carolina blue floor. They got the walls screwed back in. The wood looking is looking nice. good. Yeah, we're uptown now, man. Twin set. Alexander's going to throw it to the right-hand side, but he yeah. doesn't have enough time to do anything. Unfortunately, it looked like... I believe it was a play action, but if it was a play action, he was looking the wrong way. He's got three receivers down at the the bottom of the field. Referees giving him a sideline warning. I formation, second down and 10. Calvert's Got his hands out. He's looking to the sideline for a play. Doesn't get it off. It's going to be a too much time. Seven-step drop. Throws it deep down the right side. Wow. He had a wheel route. It was almost a beautiful throw. Almost Receiver almost ran it. under it. Almost as good, but it doesn't cut it against the Tornadoes. Not against one of the top teams in the nation, that's for sure. I just hope to see Carroll City put some type of points, whether it's a field goal, just they need some type of points at this point in the game. Third down and 10, they're gonna be penalized. Yeah. Not had an offensive player run off and by goodness, you're gonna sit there and get killed. Wow, that corner came downhill. And thank goodness they called it. The reason they called a timeout was because they had a player running off the field, which was wise, but that corner came downhill and Calvert took a big hit. Yeah, that was uh, the whistle's blown. Quarterback, you know, is looking around what the heck is going on. But as they take a timeout, we too will take a timeout. You're watching High School Football Primetime, powered by HSBN. Stay with us. And ladies and gentlemen, you always remember, always check us out. You can follow us on social media, Facebook.com, Twitter, Instagram, Vine, HSBN Sports. You find us, you will keep up to date with what is going on throughout the week with each game. Nice throw to the outside. Should have given it more effort. That was a third down play, but there was a chance where you got to see Calvert's arm strength. That was a deep out. He threw it 20 yards across the field. It's going to bring up offense. See what they've got. Holding on the offense. Decline fourth down and 10. Well, they're going to bring that punter in, and he can't get in too much trouble down inside the 35-yard line of Booker T. But he does need to get it off, and I'm sure they're going to send people after him after they've seen the last two punts that he's had. Oh, 
Doesn't look like there's enough people on the field for the tornadoes. He's wow, he gets a punt off. Mm. And there's going to be a personal foul. He got so it they're off. Gonna get a first, they're going to get a first down. He can punt the ball. He can. And I think because the last time he punt, the last two times he's punted the ball, he's been facing south. And that time. Punting with the wind. Punting with the wind. <laughs> I think he got some wind on the sideline. Well, that moves him inside the 20-yard line of the Tornadoes. See if they can get some points on the board. Here we go. Calvert brings him up to the 19-yard line. First and 10. Got a pistol set. And Calvert, you talk about arm strength. I mean, you talk about putting the ball where it needs to be. That was that ball was right where it needed to be, especially with that coverage right there. Man-to-man -man coverage. He was all over his back. You got. He put it right in the the bread basket. They get up quick. Second down. I formation. Ten yards. Off tackle to the left-hand side. Big hole down inside the 10-yard line, down to the 5-yard line. Nice off tackle play. Ellington carrying the ball. They're quickly up to the ball again. High formation. Calvert calls an audible. Mm. Off tackle to the right-hand side. Gets into about the four-yard line. Second down know. and goal. I don't know if everyone on the line uh, got the audible call because that defensive end, or maybe it was a linebacker, came off that edge. He was the one who made that play right there. Unless Calvert's going to make the block. <laughs> Second and goal from the three-yard line. They got a power eye. I'm sorry, they got a pistol set. He's looking to his quick slant. He's got it for a touchdown. Three-yard touchdown for the Chiefs. That's number 17 again. Calvert is getting some confidence. Making some plays tonight. Glad to see that they finally put some points on the board. Hopefully they can convert right here. I know the special teams is tough for these Miami Dade teams. Hopefully they convert right here, but hey, finally they drew some blood against these tornadoes, and maybe it will get this Maybe we get this game going a little bit. Well, we'll see. See if it's the same kicker that does the punting. Kick is no good. That's Locked. unfortunate. It's unfortunate. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, like we told you before, Bob Webster on the field. We're gonna see if we can get him hooked up down there on the sideline. Hey, Bob, can you hear us? One second, we're gonna see. We might have some technical difficulties. Hold on, we're gonna get this. We're gonna get this figured out. Bob, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Bob, we got 21 points for the Tornadoes. The Chiefs finally put some points on the board. How's it look down there? Well, they moved the ball a little bit this time, but their special teams is just is killing them with the two bad punts, the block extra point, the field position that they've been giving them. So they're in a big hole that they they need to work on that. And, and the receivers dropping balls too. So hey. well, thanks so much, Bob. We're gonna come back up to the booth. Gotta love it. I meant to ask him, yeah, I know that's fantastic technology. It's best. I meant to ask him if the breeze stopped down there like it stopped up here. Well, a short kick to about the five yard line, six yard line. 
Tornadoes take it and they bring it out to about the close to the 25, probably give them to the 24. Well, that's Chiefs always interesting. That is always interesting. Glad we got a chance to head down to the field. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in with us and sticking with us. Because I know it's tough. The sound down on the field is pretty crazy. Alexander throws a quick pass out to the left-hand side, picks up about six yards. And folks, if the picture's a little jumpy for you, it's all about the stream. So we get whatever we get, and we're streaming it out to you. So we apologize if the picture's jumping a little bit, just hang in there with us. Trips to the bottom side, he's got single coverage up top. Swinging out here to the right-hand side. Down to the 40, 45, 50. And look who it is, number two on his back. Mark Walton enters the game late in the game and takes plenty down the field. Looked like, a great game. Looked like Mark, and he got to that edge and made him pay for it. Brought it inside the 45 yard line of the Chiefs. I'll tell wrestling. you one thing, mentoring Booker T. Washington in the past two years, it is just a phenomenal feeling looking down at the field and seeing these young men grow, not only off the field, but on the field. I mean, the confidence, when I look, the first time I interviewed Mark Walton, is nothing compared to what he's putting out on the field. Quick throw over the middle. He was looking at Walton all the way. The middle of the field receiver was sitting there wide open waiting for it. Alexander pivoted back around and threw it to him. Picked up about close to 30 yards down to the 15 yard line. First at the 15 yard line, zone read right up the middle. Walton's gonna score a touchdown and he's in. Touchdown, Walton, 15 yards. First yes, carry of the game. Made it look easy and he took on two safeties, busted right through the middle and powered in for a touchdown for the Tornadoes. I, I believe that was maybe four plays and two of them being Walton, took it down the field. Majority of the field, reach out and touch someone, touches the, the score, or the, the end zone, put some more points up for the Tornadoes. Strong kicker this year, very strong. And it's gonna go through the uprights. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for tuning in tonight for hsbnsports.com. This is High School Game Day, brought to you by Bleacher. You're watching Booker T. Washington Tornadoes taking on the Chiefs of Carroll City High School. And we want to give a special thanks to playing the recruiting game.com. Stealth Rating. The Keeping Dreams Alive Foundation. FloridaVarsity.com FloridaHighSchool.com Florida High School Football, excuse me, dot com Florida Gridiron Preps and Bleacher.com We thank you for all your support that you do through the week for HSBN and the Keeping Dreams Alive Foundation. We thank you to all the viewers that have stuck with us this year and last, and we always appreciate what you do for these student athletes that are on the field today. Well, the Tornadoes will kick off again, 7-23 in the second quarter, up 28-6. to The wind has died down, so I'm assuming this is going to go out of the back of the end zone once again. Receivers are not even going back for it. Yes, didn't go out of the end zone, but it did make it to the end zone. 
The receivers for Carroll City aren't even going for the ball. They're just checking it out, watching it go in the end zone. Well, the Chiefs will take it over. 20 on their own 20 yard line. Down by 22 in the second. Tornadoes are going to get a lot of young guys in this game. Well, I'll tell you one thing. It is a haul to get down here, but I really enjoy being back down in Miami this year. This is our first game, if this is your first time tuning in. This is your first, um, excuse me, this is our first game down in Dade County this season, and we love to open it up with two great programs. Calvert sends a man in motion. Throws a deep one down the right-hand side. It's going out into the first level of the stands. Chiefs are going to have to score every possession if they want to stay in this ball game, and that might be asking way too much. Pitches it out here to the left-hand side, coming down here and making it out to about the 23, 24-yard line. That's the first time in a long time that I've seen a pitch. A quick toss to the outside. Ellington, he has the speed, but with a good defense, with it structured right, you're not gonna gain too many yards. That's gonna bring up a third down. Well, Calvert's gonna go with a pistol set. Looking to his left, throws it over the middle. It's a nice throw. That great That's a catch. first down. Great nice catch throw. by number great three. Catch by number three. That's an impact player. I'm sorry, Stephen Newbold, one of our impact players today. Great, great hand strength right there. Eye formation, off tackle to the right. There's some yardage out there. He's going to make it almost nine yards to about the 39-yard line. I'm sorry, the 41-yard line of the Chiefs. Not yet into the Tornado territory. If they keep up this drive the way they are so far, I think they'll be on the way to put some more points on the board. Quick set, second down and only one yard. Looked right like up the QB. middle. Yeah, looked like a QB sneak right up the middle. Just pushed the pile. It's the first down. That's a water break. If they take a water break, we're, we're going to talk about those sponsors. And also, folks, tune in to KDA Foundation. That's the foundation that supports all of these young men and the activities that we provide for them. HSBN Sports is one of the arms that gives them the, the visibility and the, the, we show them off around the country. And as you saw earlier, there's playing the recruiting game.com. That is actually the only recruiting learning management system in the country, patent pending, that student athletes can go through. We take a business approach to the recruiting world. And if you're going out there, student athlete, coaches, you know this, and trying to get a $100,000, $200,000 scholarship, you better take it like a business because it is. That's playing the recruiting game.com. We've got several high schools on it right now as well. We also just launched Stealth Rating and Ranking. We will rate and rank student athletes based on what coaches are looking for, character, grades, and game readiness. Yes, what coaches are finally looking for, StealthRating.com. And we will come to your high school, and if you want any more information, you can email us at info, info at StealthRating.com. Dot com. You talk about a jailhouse blitz. Whew. I mean, those linemen might as well have turned around and said, look out for that quarterback. Wow. I'm not too sure what was going on with that motion. Kind of looked like arena football where those guys run about 20 yards back. But he was moving all over the place, and I don't think one lineman put up a block. No, and uh – Calvert, Calvert's coming off the field a little shaken up. And not only is he shaken up, but my stomach is pretty shaken up by the smell 
It smells like maybe barbecue pulled pork. I think that just walked in this booth. Yeah, last year they had the Bahamians down there doing the crack conch, man. That was oh some good gosh. stuff. Come on. It was beautiful. Tornadoes had the ball back inside the Chiefs' 40-yard 40, 40 line. And Walton is not going to come up too much on that carry. But it's good to see him in the game. Once again, I, I went down to practice. I believe it was Tuesday. And he wasn't. He was in pads, but he wasn't practicing. Well, he'd seen enough. We want to get out there and get some stats. And he's going to get some stats tonight. Give his... Well, Alexander's going to keep it on his own read. And he's going to be met by a host of Chiefs. He only picks up about two yards. Bring up third down and about seven. And we got some dirty laundry on the field. Got some guys getting in each other's face. I'll tell you one thing. I'm looking over outside of the stadium and I can see the Booker T. Washington band. They didn't bring the whole band, but they look like they're getting pumped up for this halftime show. And you'll be and able to see them this halftime. We're going to show absolutely. them off. Absolutely. I wanted to mention that I know sitting in front of your computer too long make you crazy or the TV. So make sure you get a snack, but make sure halftime you come back over and you check out not only just the band, but these dance teams. I mean, these girls and these guys, they're doing phenomenal things outside of the realm of sports as well. So make sure you stay tuned for the halftime show. And they're also scholarshiped as well to the university level, and we want to help them as much as we help the student athletes. Got bands that give scholarships, dance teams give scholarships. Good move by Alexander. He throws it deep down the middle. Throws it up, actually. Should have been picked off. Got I'm away with that sure. one, Ryan. Yep, I'm not too sure about that decision for Alexander. I mean, has the receiving core. I, I, I like the trust that he has in his receiving core, but that was uh, dangerous. Though they're only up by 20, 22 points, so I guess they could take a couple chances, but we want to practice good habits on the field. Well, that brings up fourth down and shoot, 22, and they're going for it. Empty set, why not? He may get sacked. He's got some good moves back there, and he is going to be brought down. He's going to be brought down on his own 47-yard line. Yeah, that was a great job by Alexander. Unfortunately, the side he was scrambling to, he had no support. He had no receivers over there. So tough to throw it out of bounds. Tough to throw it to the ground. I think, yeah. he, I think he did what he could right there. Well, it was already fourth down and 21. Well, the Chiefs will take over with 420 left on the clock inside the Tornado's territory. Put another one on the board and make it interesting before you go in at the half. Culver brings him up in an eye formation. Gives it off tackle to the right hand side and there's nothing there. I'm not sure how many points you're gonna get on the off tackle play against one of the nation's number one defenses. Well, between the Carroll City receivers and the quarterback, um, they got great matchups, I believe. Um, the running game, they got a great running back. I don't, I don't know about the side formation stuff. A little quick throw out there. They've got their hands of steel, and they are just not going anywhere. A little swing pass, doesn't pick up anything. It's gonna be third down and 10. Need to get that ball down on the hash in the middle of the field. That was successful early. Looking for a quick slant, overthrown. Fourth down and, well, they gave him two yards on something. Fourth down and eight. And they are going to uh, 
punt it back to Tornadoes with 3.18 on the clock. Some of the best high school football is playing right here, Friday night under the lights. Punt is off. Young man can punt the ball. Taking it at the 10. Oh my goodness, lost his footing. Back up over the 20 yard line. And I think that's what it was. Uh, facing, facing the right direction. Got the good wind speed. Got that nice sea breeze coming right off the coast, especially with that system rolling out there. I know we were freaking out earlier about that, that weather system we got going on. Thought we were gonna get rained out tonight. I don't wanna jinx anything, so I'm gonna knock on the table. Hopefully it's wood. Well, there's no wind right now. That system must be sucking all the wind up into it. It's, a, it's another summer night. You bring that breeze back. We'll get Bobby down on the field in a minute. Halftime, tell him to send some of that breeze back. Give us up the middle for nothing. Trying to burn up some of this clock. And believe it or not, I think this is probably one of the fastest halves that we've gone through. Third game into the season. These past couple games have been pretty brutal. I don't know if they're extending the quarter times or what or whatnot, <laughs> but these refs have sure taken a lot of time. Oh, last week it was 20 minutes on that one decision. Put the board points on the board, take the points off the board. Here we go, second down and 10. Alexander's got them back. I'm sure second half they'll get some fresh bodies in there. Zone read right up the middle. Pick up about five or six. They're, they'll be content to run the clock out. And before we head into halftime, I know we're going to bring, uh, bring Bob back up, see if we can get that mic figured out. I think it's important to talk about um, the, the piece that uh, Bob brings to the table. Definitely an important factor when it comes to our foundation, KDA, but we'll get that to you right before we get down to him. Yes, absolutely. The throw is complete for a first down out here to number 19. That'll be small. Back one small. He is one of our impact players tonight. Run is up the middle. You know who it is. Mark Walton picks up 23 yards. Don't turn away and look away, folks, because if you do, and you're going to miss and it. All I could do is just smile because I look back about a year and a half, two years ago, sitting in the locker room with Booker T, with Mark Walton, shy as can be when we turn that camera on. Wow, big hit. Mm. Don't turn around. They're going to find you turn around. Well, he's a big boy. He, I know he can handle the weight, the weight training program they have over at Booker T. Washington. I know they can handle those type of hits. But once again, Mark Walton is just outstanding to see the progression that he's made in this short amount of time. I mean, as a sophomore, he was making huge plays out here. I mean, starting as a sophomore in some games. Well, he's committed as a sophomore to the U. Outstanding. So junior, he's trying to get out of here after his junior year. I don't know how they're going to work that. But, yeah, Mark Walton, uh, the interview is on uh, NCRA Sports Network um, way back in the archives. Way, way back. back now. And when you did uh, the Tour of Champions. You may or not. Yeah, let's get Bob down on the field. Not yet? Okay. I thought you were going to I thought you were gonna give the folks a little time to to butter him up. I know I know Bob likes when we butter him up a little bit. Talk about what he does for the KDA Foundation. Bob's an integral part for the KDA Foundation. He uh, he volunteers his time and his wife also bringing in all those fantastic kids from DECA at Stoneman Douglas and and without Bobby we wouldn't be able to get into some of those doors cuz that Webster name, if you don't know it, it goes way back. 
to uh, the days in Broward County, Webster Sports. So Bob Webster is an integral part in us being able to get in the door to athletic departments. That's down the middle to Walton. And it's incomplete. Is that Walton out there at the wideout? No. No, that is number six that was going up for the ball. And uh, Alexander, he just kind of threw that loaf of bread up Green. in the air with hopes and dreams. But it didn't come down the way they expected it to. Almost coming up with an interception late in this second quarter. And again, getting back to Bob, reputation goes back with his father 60 years. I remember that we used to go to Webster Sports in Fort Lauderdale and and uh, Bobby just, uh, you call on Bobby, he's always there. If we need to get in to talk to an AD anywhere, literally in the country, we call Bob and he gets the door open. That's the kind of relationship he has for that many years. Throws out here to the right-hand side. It's a nice throw by Alexander. Gosh. Number nine makes a good catch. That's Davis. small again. No, that's, that's small again. That's small again. Okay, I'm sorry. Small again, just making... I mean, you could tell the way Alexander, in his drop, the power of him getting back. You just know it's coming out. I mean, that spring is just loading. And, man, that was a beautiful ball. That gets me excited. It was. It was a nice spiral. I love that tight spiral. They've done a lot of improvement down here, Ryan, since we were back down. They've got the, the brand-new barriers down there. The, the field was looking good when I was down there looking at the players. They got it all groomed up, the uh, – press box i was really surprised folks if you haven't been in this press box uh you know i'm not going to tell you how old i am but i played playoff games in here and that's a long time ago and uh you know this this place has jealousy windows and if you don't know what jealousy windows you're not from south florida and you ain't been in south florida since the 70s or 60s uh but there are jealousy windows up here and, and if you're laughing yeah you should be and right in front of us Instead of plate glass, we got solid wood that slides up and down. And if it rains from the east, you better bring some rain gear. But we got 40 seconds, close to 40 seconds left. I'm going to get Bobby down on the field, and we're going to find out. We're going to find out the reaction of this Carroll City. He's on the Carroll City side. We're going to find out, you know, what's happening with the Carroll City coach and the kind of uh, feeling they got going over there. I know he started out on the Booker T side. But he wandered back over to the Carroll City side. We'll get a good, uh, get get something out of this halftime. And it looks now like the they're going to go to another timeout. timeout. 28 to 6, 37 seconds left. I'm not and sure. I, I think I think as we take that timeout, you know, we're talking about it. I think we should welcome everyone into the booth with our in the booth shot. We're going to see how this works. I just but since along, we're talking okay. about these jealousy windows, we're going to get we're going to get lined up. There we are. No, nope, not yet. Hold on. No, nope. we're gonna get this worked out. And we welcome you live right to the booth. As you can see, Ryan Stout here with Glenn Stout. Got wisdom. Got the young buck on the mic tonight. And as you can see behind us, we're talking about jealousy windows. That's this what is, I was talking about. This is old school in here tonight. Always nice to be up in here, live streaming live. You're not seeing any high school football like this anywhere else. So when they talk about, you don't get too many times where they're talking about high school stadiums and what we have to deal with as a production team when we come into these high school boxes. Oh, you know, our, our bloggers know the guys are pa very patient, but I'll tell you, it is, uh, it's interesting. And that's why we're the only ones up here doing what we're doing because it's hard to figure out. Alexander throws it deep down the left-hand side. There's a receiver is wide open. It's going to be pass interference. And he's going to give it to him. And um, he's going to give it to him. He wanted it, and he's going to give it to him. Got a defensive they, pass interference. And what's interesting is, is they didn't start the clock, so I didn't start the clock. So that was a free play. <laughs> and you're not going to believe, as they're getting ready to go into halftime, you'll never believe who walked behind us. Big Wanna, Gentle Ben. Yes, sir. That's one of the founding members, folks of Keeping Dreams Alive Foundation, Ben Hanks, who's also a coach over at Booker T. Washington. He also runs the Parks and Recreations for Overtown. He and Pat Lowe, he took Pat Lowe under his wing. They're both Florida Gators. Ben Hanks was a linebacker up there. He's a gentle Ben now and um, did a fantastic job. And I came around 2003. They started in 2001. And and Ben's our, uh, our arms down here in, in Overtown. Wonderful job. 
Alexander's uh, going to shuffle around and get out of bounds and give him a little more time. Give him a couple extra plays. Well, I know one thing. The referee's not complaining about the clock. If the ref isn't complaining about the clock, they're giving it stretch, super stretch. So Ben Hanks and Pat Lowe, uh, Ben, the original founder of Keeping Dreams Alive Foundation, Pat Lowe. Hey, we got to give a shout out to some of the rest of the KDA board of directors. Uh, we've got Silk Cozart up there in Knoxville, Tennessee. Silk has just got back from L.A. We're getting ready to look at a, uh, one of our first schools up in Knoxville, Tennessee bringing in there for our, our academic awareness. And it's some exciting stuff going on with Keeping Dreams Alive Foundation. Nice catch. Nice catch. Number seven. Make up for Taylor. some of the ground they lost right there. And the clock is running finally. They may get this play off. They will get this one off. And he's gonna go to the corner of the end zone. And what a great touchdown. Catch. My goodness, the ref is looking, but it looks, no, it's incomplete. Wow. Oh, my goodness, oh. and the ref got a flag on the on the field. It's going to be pass interference on defense probably because that defender, the corner, was all in his face. And I'll tell you, he must have had it in his hands because the ref stood there and looked at it for 5, 10 seconds. And he was going, I'm telling you. If I was a defensive player, I knew exactly where Alexander was going to throw it as soon as the ball was snapped. Corner all day long. I mean, he was staring that thing down. What can you do as a defensive back? You got your back turned to the quarterback. It's got to be a perfect throw. Can you blame him for doing defensive pass interference? Probably not. No, you can't blame him. 28 points, seconds left. It doesn't matter that close because it's not a spot foul. They're going to get a... First down, but really doesn't matter. You got one more play on the clock. Yeah, uh, Silk Cozart, Director of Education and Entertainment. If you don't know Silk, he's been in 40 films. You probably know him best from White Man Can't Jump. Fabulous job doing, uh, doing the work for the kids. Now you're going to get a timeout from the Chiefs because I guess they don't want more points scored on the board. They want to talk about it. And you've got Erica Lane. Erica's up in with our Jacksonville team we're getting ready to uh, work together with an entire development team the back end people that mates the uh, playing the recruiting game the stealth rating all this computer back end stuff work they've been working diligently trying to get this this stream better and effective um, they work very very hard up there we're in negotiations right now with another company to acquire them to help us develop the things that we need to develop for those kids and Erica Lane is an uh, integral part of that. Uh, we've got um, Shelly Solomon, who is our director of female sports. And Shelly does a phenomenal job, tennis player. Back in the day, if uh, you recognize the Solomon name, well, Harold was number five in the world back in the 70s. And, and Shelly was actually number one in the world when she was 12 and 14 years old. So Shelly does a great job with our women, women and uh, mentoring women and girls sports, and she had her first tennis tournament six months ago. It benefited urban kids. And everything we do through the foundation is absolutely free for the kids. We're an inclusive foundation, not an exclusive. We're an inclusive network, not exclusive. There's a the throw over the middle. He's gonna get another play out of it, Ryan. Yes, Incomplete. he will. Incomplete. They're gonna milk this. But as I said, everything we do is for the kids. We want to empower those kids, and our only payback is to give back, and we have a fantastic time mentoring them. Booker T. Washington last Saturday, last year on Saturdays, we'll be back in there with playing a recruiting game. Carroll City, coaches, if you're watching, players, if you're watching, and you want to be a part of our program or you want us to bring the program to you, we will bring it to you absolutely free. And I see some bright shoes coming out on the field. Number 30, our kicker and punter tonight for Booker T. Washington. He's going to see if he could get some more on his highlight reel. Well, we can see the screen is jumping some, and we've got a good stream going here. There's going to be another timeout. And we apologize, but it's uh, it's all about that upload stream, and we're watching it as well. So we will have this full replay, and the full replay will be – Absolutely smooth. Well, I can tell you one thing. Whoever brought the barbecue upstairs is killing me right now. <laughs> and I can't wait to go to halftime. This six seconds is the longest six seconds of my life. 
And it's a side it's a winder, ball. and he puts it through the uprights. Boom. Got and a there knuckle goes, ball. There goes that cannon. Puts three more points on the board, brings it into halftime. Well, that's halftime, and I know we got hooked up here to uh, Bob Webster. Bob, you've been down there on the field. You've been seeing what's going on. The Chiefs are taking a beating. They started out a little bit shaky. You started out on the Booker T. Washington side. What was the uh, uh, the what was the uh, what was it like the temperament on the Booker T. Washington side? They just got in from a big game from Central. They won it by one point down here. They've been traveling all over the country. How did they look to you? Oh, they're outstanding, outstanding. I. Uh, they look like they uh, have been resting for weeks. I mean, they look a lot fresher than their opponent tonight. You know, I look on their roster, and there's like 75 of them. So they've got seconds and thirds down there. Are they got a bunch of kids down there trying to get in? Oh, yeah, they're chomping on the bit for sure. I'm sure we're going to see some in the second half. What was the, what was the, uh, the coaches? How was their, their attitude down there with the players? The, of the which coaches team? for Booker T. Washington. How was their attitude with the players? Oh, they're, they're still on them. They're, 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 it's, the game's not over. They're coaching like it's it's still a tight ball game. Yeah, they're pretty calm up here, too. Now, you made your way over to the Carroll City tonight. Carroll City was down quick, 14 points. Hey, what was going on when that punter muffed two punts? Oh, uh, that definitely deflated the defense because uh, I don't know what the time of possession of this game is, but uh, they've been the defense have been out there all all night long. Did you see when the punter came off the field? Did you see anything? Uh, you know, did the coach get into him because he muffed two punts. I know you can talk yeah. to him to hear me down there. Yeah, his head was down both times, so his confidence level needs to be picked up. Now the Chiefs came in here 0 and 2. They've only lost two games by five points, but they haven't seen the likes of a national championship high school team. Although this is a crosstown rival, so you can sometimes show the records out. What's the attitude and the feeling that you can feel with the kids on the field, the Chiefs, the players? What are they? You know, are they beat down? What are they feeling like now? Uh, they're beat down and they're 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 very tired as well. It looks like th th they're, it's going to be a long second half unless unless some fires lit. You gotta, did you get to take a look at Calvert? He took a big hit when he came off the side. Did you get to take a look at him? Was he okay? Oh, that hit wasn't as big as it looked. He, he's Looks fine. Good. Okay. That's Bob Webster. Bob, thanks for joining us down on the sideline. We're going to bring it back up here to the press box, and, and we're going to go take a break. And then when we come back from the break, we're going to show you some of the Booker T. Washington band. They work very hard for what they do, and uh, let's give them some time as well. My name is Glenn Stout. I'm with Ryan Stout. Bob Webster's on the field. Stay with us.
the moment you've all been waiting for. The dance routine. That's right, we came to show up and show out. Looking at our seats, y'all ain't ready. Another Macho Tanero production. Direct the bands, Mr. Mark Lugo. Dance line sponsor, Shamar Roberts. Major Red sponsor, Courtney Beckle. Black sponsor, Brianna Mitchell. Administrative staff, Mr. William Aristide, principal. Mr. Karen Lawrence, vice principal. And Ms. Kim White, activity director. And y'all truly, your announcer, aka Chop.
players getting ready to come back on the field. 31 to six, Tornadoes have a big lead. Chiefs are out there stretching. Bands did a super job. Nice to have Bobby down on the sideline for us. Play-by-play -play action on the sideline. I see you got the big logo going on. And we've, we're ready to roll. Chiefs are coming back out on the field. Got about a minute left. Ryan, what are your thoughts on the first half? Well, unfortunately, what we thought was the Tornadoes were going to come out and, you know, do a pretty good job. Unfortunately, the Chiefs, they had a game plan coming into this game, but it probably hadn't worked out as well as they thought it was going to. Expectations-wise, you're playing against one of the top teams in the nation. So what can you expect? I think they've done a pretty good job so far. You know, when it comes hand-in-hand, I think Booker T. Washington's going to outlast the Chiefs at Carroll City. But with the mental mistakes, the, the between the penalties, the special teams, and the drop balls, I think they could be doing a lot better. Those two muff punts really hurt. That was 14 points of the 31. So, you know, not that they were going to hold them. They literally scored on every possession except for about three of them. But it didn't help that they weren't able to drive the ball back and make them at least work for it. Right. They got their inside the, their own 20 yard line like twice, so you're not gonna have to do too much. And then you get that firepower of Walton comes off the sideline and all of a sudden, boom, fresh legs and two plays, he brings it in to the end zone. What do you think is gonna happen in the second half? Well, I think Booker T, they're gonna come back out and they're gonna stay consistent with what they've been doing so far. Like I said earlier on in the game, there, there's been a coaching change, but it's father like son, you know, like like son like father, however it goes. You're not going to see, I mean, the Chiefs had, had an opportunity to check out. The offense hasn't changed since last year. We still got Harris in the reins as offensive coordinator, so you can already understand what to expect when the offense is going to come out. Who knows, maybe this is time for, uh, if they feel comfortable enough, Booker T, they'll just rank up some more points. They'll uh, flash get a little more flash on their highlight tape. But I think uh, between Carroll City, they need to come out. Calvert needs to come in as a leader, as an impact player that he is. The commit to uh, USF needs to come in. He needs to step up his game, as well as Newbold and uh, Ellington as well. There's three impact players that are going to do a great job the rest of the season, but I think they had the potential to do great things the rest of this game. So we'll definitely see what they can put out and, um, you know, I think, I think Tornadoes are going to walk away with this one, but I think Carroll City, they still need to put up a fight. Well, and I also believe that uh, Tornadoes are going to get a lot of fresh players in the game for the second half. Coach Ice is going to be able to rest those players because they've had a long three weeks. They've been on a road to Virginia, on the back on the road to Georgia, and now last week Central, a big bang-up game. So I'm sure he's going to get to play some of his fresh players. Well, here we go. We're going to find out real quick. Booker T kicks it back off to the Chiefs. Chiefs Booker need T. to put something on the board. I mean, they have Booker T. When you talk about depth, I mean, these students, they these athletes, they understand. I don't care if you're third string or first string. If you play on this team, you're going to have a championship mentality. So hopefully some of these young guys will get a chance to show off their talents in tonight's game. They're expected to do that. Well, there's that leg again, back in the back of the end zone, so we won't even bother starting the clock. And that's Jose. I always get his name wrong. Borre Borg Borg Borgales. Borgales. I, I'm pretty sure the G is an H sound in Spanish. Morales. Sorry, Sorry, Jose, for uh, just destroying your name, but we'll try better next time. We got the Jose part. Well, they're going to take the ball at the 20 yard line. First and 10. They're huddled up on the sideline with their head coach, Harold Barnwell. Give them some encouraging words. And like you said, Ryan, Mr. Calvert needs to show them something because he's going in the big league soon. And the big boys will be just breathing down his throat, just about as big as these guys. There's a man in motion. Looking to the right for a quick shot out here. Picks up five. And I think it's going to be a face mask on that play. Ellington, a great pickup. I'll tell you one thing. Ellington, 
He doesn't have a very long stride, but he is a powerful runner. When he gets the ball, he's trying to make he's trying to make some moves. And what a great uh, pickup right there by Ellington. And they're going to pick up a couple more yards on that face mask. Yeah, he had enough close to the first down, and they're going to get another 15 probably. And I'll tell you one thing. Once again, I think I don't think we had time to say, but that band on both sides of the ball. I mean, Booker T. Washington and Tornadoes and Carroll City, if you had a chance to sit down and watch both of these bands, they are outstanding. Great job to the bands for that outstanding halftime show. It felt like I was watching the movie Drumline. Well, that was offsetting penalties. They had a personal foul. The Chiefs had a personal foul, so it offset the face mask. Calvert looks to his right, back to his left. Mm. Got to catch that ball. Wasn't going to pick up much. Well, number one, I think he opened up. Either he opened up to the wrong side, to the fake to the running back, or the running back went the wrong way. Regardless of what happened right there, he threw the ball off his back foot. He didn't have any balance. He wasn't under control. He has, he has great arm strength. Um, you know, when you're throwing off your back foot, that thing is going to go way out of bounds, as you saw. Well, he's looking to his right all the way. He's going to try to take off, and there's not going to be anything. Maybe a yard. It's going to bring up third down and nine yards forever. And I'm not sure if we've seen him take off yet tonight. When I was talking to him, um, I always like to get impact players. We always like to talk about three traits that represent them as an athlete. I don't think speed was one of them. Maybe that's why we haven't seen him take off at all tonight. He's got a man in motion, trips to the top side. He's got third and long, and they're bringing everybody. Tries a little screen out here, and it's not going anywhere. Yeah, that was a great play. I believe, uh, I want to say it's number eight for the defense. James King, if it was, didn't give him anything. It's fourth down, and actually they're going to move him back. Five, five-yard loss. Let's see what this young man does. He is back in his inside his own five-yard line and punting the ball. So very and dangerous it, place to be. They're going to come after it, him. It looked like they're coming after it, and they are. It's going to come off the side of his foot. I guess a decent pun with a good bounce out of bounds. And once again, as we're talking about these Carroll City athletes, we'll go into their impact players. Number one, Stephen Calvert, number 12 quarterback for the Chiefs. Newbold, an outstanding wide receiver. Steven Newbold, excuse me. And we have Reneldon Ellington at the running back position. And once again, don't want to forget our scholar athletes of the game for Carroll City. We have Chantel Sai. Mark Hammond taking off. Picks almost up sounded about seven yards. Almost sounded like you said Mark Ingram right there. Mark Walton. Mark Ingram. <laughs> Former Alabama. Big time running back. Hey, who knows? Mark Walton. I mean, the size that he's put on in this past season, I mean, he he's a big boy out there running the ball. Gives to him again. Gonna try to make it to the right hand side. Picks up two or three. Once again, this is high school football prime time powered by HSBN, brought to you by Bleacher.com. Here in Traspal Stadium in Miami, Florida, you're watching the Tornadoes. Yes, I said it. The nationally ranked Tornadoes of Booker T. Washington take on the Chiefs of Carroll City, Miami, Carroll City High School. Third down and a short one. Snap is high. And Alexander's going to get it all on his own. And I, I think he came up with the first down. He sure did. Great recovery. Great thought process going through the quarterback's head. Snaps over his head. I don't know if it was a designated play where he was going to take off, but he did the right thing by reacting and came up, fortunately, with the first down. Snap was high to the right. It was supposed to be a zone read. By the time he got control of it, he basically just took off. 
Walton, another zone read to Walton. He's going to take it down the right-hand side, inside the 15, the 10, 5, touchdown. And he gallops like a horse, Mark Walton, doing his thing. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. 31-yard zone read, Mark Walton makes it look easy, running by people, saying, see you in the end zone. See you at the U. Wow. Yes. See you at the U is right. What an outstanding pickup by the University of Miami. But hey, you never know. A commit doesn't always mean they're going there. As we saw, Treon Harris commit, former commit to uh, Florida State University, pulled the old switcheroo signing day, pulled out the Gator hat, and is doing fantastic things. Unfortunately, I'm not a Gator fan at heart. I bleed Tennessee orange, but Bob down there on the field, I know he can hear me. He bleeds that, I guess that uh, that orange and blue. But Treon, once again, doing great things up there in what Bob would like to call a scrimmage game against Eastern, was it Eastern Michigan? I believe it's Eastern Michigan. Yeah, Eastern Michigan. That They've got all the teams who've got their warm up now. You've got a bunch of players that we have um, from all over the country and in the SEC, so now they're getting ready to see what they really have because they'll start playing each other. And uh, Katie bar the door. Again, we want to give a thank you, a big thank you out to Bleacher.com for all of the graphics that he's provided for us. Bleacher.com, B-L-E-E-C-H-R.com, and Florida Gridiron Preps. Dot com providing the stats for us tonight. Florida High School Football. Dot com. That's Florida H S Football. Dot com. And our newest blogger, Michael at Florida Varsity. Dot com. We appreciate all of you for being with us tonight, and your fans, and for being patient with our jumpy screen. It's high school football, man. And let's see if we go right back out of the end zone. Jose, he's got the boot. I'm sure it is. The uh, back men are up around the five yard line. They're not even messing with it. And That's once again, about a yard outside the back of the end zone. Jose, what an, what an outstanding uh, player and what an outstanding opportunity to play on a nationally ranked team and, and be able to be a part of such great tradition and on top of that not saying he has the easiest job out there but he's getting the same ride as mark walton that's getting beat up out there even though he's putting up some some points he's getting the same ride you're, you're absolutely correct and hopefully we see him take his talents to the next level well the chiefs will take it at the 20 yard line a familiar place for them They'll need to hold on to the ball a little longer to keep the Tornado's offense off the field. Looked like they were trying to get a split screen, but there was no blockers in front. May have picked up two yards. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Um, I guess it was a spot pass to the inside receiver. Usually if you're gonna go screen, um, slip screen, maybe you're gonna go to the outside because he had no blocking whatsoever on that play. Looking to the right, down the right-hand side, he throws it short, had a receiver. Number three out there was, was open, that was Newbold, one of our impact players. He just didn't put enough arm on it, and once again, you saw him throw it off the back leg and he didn't step into it. Well, he does have the arm strength. Uh, when I went out to practice, you know, we had a chance, I got a chance to see him throw the ball around, and I mean, he can rip that thing, but when you're on your back foot, you know, there's the outcome. Yeah, and a big difference playing in a practice and in a game. Another swing pass out here to the right side. There's a lot of room. They're going to give him that room. It's going to bring up fourth down and two yards. Dangerous spot for this punter. Well, that was almost a great move by Ellington. Had some open field, but great uh, form tackle by number nine on the Booker T. Washington uh, defense. One thing that I'm interested in is our last game, we were down Miramar. It seems the opposite tonight when the opposing team has the ball. Usually the band is cranked up. Tonight, Carroll City 
the band is just going. Not too sure what the thought process is, is on that one. Well, you know, they practiced long and hard. Wow, almost. Oh, is, man. He is beat to pulp. I can't even believe he got the punt off. And he wow. is pounded. And there's a tornado down. And my goodness, that young man is tough. Yeah, he barely got that ball off. Talk about getting, getting torn up. That wow. young man. Got a new quarterback in right now. Jamie Taylor. And like They'll we said early on, coming into the half, it's a great opportunity for these tornadoes to start running through that depth chart. It's so important, especially for this nationally ranked team, is when they play at that type of level, I mean, what happens if these guys go to Virginia? What, what happened, you know, when these guys, they start traveling all over the country playing these big time teams and someone falls out in the middle of California? These guys have got to be ready. Good defense, good defense to stop. Tackle came down, made a big play. Second down, 11. But I can guarantee you most of those tornadoes out there have got fresh legs, and that is a good thing. they got to learn to play and play at a high level. That way they just reload every year. Taylor's going to throw one out to the right-hand side. Got a receiver, picks up about two. And once again, as we're talking about these student athletes, reintroduce you to our Booker T. Washington impact players of tonight's game. Maurice Alexander, at starting quarterback, just had a chance to step off the field to give some of the young guns a shot. We got Smalls at wide receiver making some great plays tonight. And big boy Ben doing his thing out there as well. First impact lineman we've had in a long time. So we thank you, Coach Harris, for introducing us to Big Ben down there. Taylor gives it off off tackle. Pick up about another three yards. will bring up fourth down and five. Fourth down and four. I don't think they're going to punt it, Ryan. They've really got no reason to punt it. They'll bring in uh, some more fresh legs. Just run that clock. Taylor's looking over the middle. Throws it in traffic. Gets picked off. And, and he takes a big it down hit. the right hand side to the 40, down to the 30, to the 20, to the 10, 5. That pickoff takes it all the way to the house. We'll get his number. Chiefs put six points on the floor. And let's Got a see flag if there's down. dirty laundry. Yes, there is. 35 yard line. Bring it on back. Wow, that young man is fast. Yes, sir. Got his number? I. Number one? I want to say it was number one. After the interception. Yes, I believe it's number one. But we don't have a one on here. One thing about high school football, never know what kind of roster you're going to get. Well, they're going to take a timeout for a water break, and that was exciting to see those Chiefs take it. We're going to take a quick timeout. Stay with us, folks. You're watching High School Programming Network. That's HSPN Sports, South Florida.
Well, if Carroll City doesn't get this touchdown, which I believe they're not going to, that is uh, that's a big upset for the Chiefs because you know at this point in the game, with 38 points on the board, they need some type of blood. Well, that was a sweet pick, and I'm sure Coach uh, Ice is talking to young Jamie Taylor over there. Jamie is uh, a senior quarterback. Um, you know, he threw it into triple coverage, and that was a beautiful pick. It was some amazing speed from that young man, and I, I wish we had his number on the roster because he uh, – he went bye bye down that hash and across the field. It was a, that was a 65. No, that was a, actually a 70 yard interception for a touchdown, all nullified. But they'll start it out at the 50 yard line. The coaches are bringing them back over to talk to them. And it looks like we got a number for Carroll City. Rashad Fenton. Rashad Fenton. Let's see what number he was, but Rashad made an incredible. There he is. He's number 20 on here, so let's switch that. He's number one. Rashad Fenton. Amazing speed on that young man. And he's a senior free safety. It looks like they're still talking about it, which the refs always this seem to be This is deja vu. Do these guys come down from Miramar? <laughs> well, if you didn't watch the Miramar game against Heritage, yes. it's the same situation. They wouldn't know what you're talking about. They scored, took points off the board, but they literally took 20 minutes and finally Got put the six points back on the board. Look at the stack formation at the bottom of the field. Knocked down by the defensive tackle. Great play. And I probably would have went to the bottom of the field. That stack formation, it looked, they had the safety over top, but didn't look like he was really acknowledging what uh, was going on. He's got his jersey crumpled up. I'll tell you what I'm doing next time. I'm bringing my mini binoculars. Get the spectacles out. Howard back. He's looking down the middle. Oh, my goodness. Wide open. He's over the throws. middle of the field is wide open. You got a safety backpedaling like he's running a track race backwards. And a Calvert just put the ball on the money. I mean, too many missed opportunities in this game. Not getting a lot of support from his receivers, that's for sure, Ryan. He's got a pistol set. And boy, are they pressing him. It looks like Booker we're going to get another timeout. Yeah, he had. they had 12 men on the field. Wow, I smell those uh, ribs or something floating through here. That breeze picked back up. Well, Bobby's down on the field sending us up a breeze. Thanks, Bob. Let's see if we can, let's see if we can mic him back up. Bobby, we're up here watching the, uh, the tornadoes. They brought in some fresh legs. They got the young man that uh, Coach Ice grabbed by the ear when he threw that pick. He took off for that touchdown, but I'm sure he's happy. They've got a lot of fresh legs out there now. I'm going to take it back up top. Unfortunately, had some technical difficulties. Hopefully, Bob's got his mic on. Sorry about that, folks. Got a great pass from Calvert. Quick out to the far side of the field. Once again, we apologize for the technical difficulties. It's okay. We've got, we've got, that's a long ways down there, and, you know, that button is confusing sometimes. Been there, done that. Yes, sir. Believe me. We just appreciate and love having them out here. Fourth down, they're going for it. Fourth and four. Calvert, empty set, gonna roll to the right. He's got a and receiver. He's got it. Gosh. Picks up the first down and a few more and he's out of bounds. They're gonna keep the clock running. I think he got down. Referee's gonna mark him at the 30. 
That's a beautiful, beautifully executed play by both quarterback yarder. and wide receiver. A 15-yard gain. Referee uh, signaled to keep the clock running, but scoreboard is not. There's pressure. Oh, and he puts Drops the ball the on ball. the ground, and luckily he recovers it. Calvert. Talk my about oh killing my. momentum. My oh my. That puts him back about 15 yards almost. Big loss. It's going to bring up second and forever. Second and three yards. Sorry about that. Nice pass. And it almost, whoa. Can you I don't know if uh, I believe what I almost saw right there. It almost looked like they were going to run the hook and ladder. It did look like it, and the running back didn't come up <laughs> quick enough. And as he was trying to do the, the hook and ladder, he got picked up and slammed down from the ladder. Well, I think the receiver made a smart choice. You know, he could have made the decision to just kind of fling it out there, but I think he made a, a pretty good decision. It could have gone either way. Well, that was only a pickup of about six yards. It was probably, it's supposed to be pitched back and gone longer, but that's third and forever. And there's big pressure on mm. Calvert, and he's going down for another almost 10 yard loss. Gonna bring up fourth down and forever, back to almost their 50, almost the 50 yard line. Well, they're bringing the house. I mean, you got, when you got three wide receivers out in the back, or in the, in the no fly zone, you got five defensive backs covering three wide receivers. But not only that, that means someone, you know, someone's got to be blocking, but not enough time for uh, Calvert, unfortunately, coming up with a uh, fourth down. Well, you've got these big time defensive backs and I don't care first or second, second string is going to play anywhere in the nation, first string, and they're just press coverage and they're all over them. That's a That's nice a, punt. Punt. Oh, man. Well, it didn't go that far, but it finally got it off and getting a good bounce down inside close to the 10-yard line, about the 12-yard line. Tornadoes will get the ball, and they're going to probably run out this third quarter. Yes, sir. Once again, high school football prime time, powered by HSBN, brought to you by Bleacher.com. If this is your first time tuning in with us, we sure do appreciate you coming in and watching the only live high school streaming network in the nation. And we're bringing you the best football in the nation, South Florida, right here from Traz Powell Stadium in Miami, Florida. The Tornadoes of Booker T. Washington, nationally ranked, take on the Chiefs of Carroll City. Well, he's gonna get sacked. Six yard loss, back inside the five yard line. And the play's getting a little sloppy because you're bringing in the, the new guys, but you got to give them time. Got to give them time to adjust. Coach Ice isn't going to be happy with that anyway. Second down well, and about 15. Well, I have to correct you. I know you're so used to saying Coach Ice, but I don't, I don't think Junior down there, Harris Junior, is the same nickname. <laughs> That's true. Coach Ice is over at the U now. Well, reversing yardage. No way, it's about a yard. And speaking of Coach Ice, what an outstanding, not only football coach, but a man. Um, known Coach Ice since for how long now? You've known oh, him longer than I have. Yeah, Coach Ice has been uh, working with Keeping Dreams Alive Foundation when he was at the U the first time. And he would always bring the uh, players up to our camps in Lauderdale Lakes where uh, he'd bring them up in a police escort and they would just, the kids would love it. The, 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 the people around the neighborhood would just line the fences and, and he just uh, ran a great operation. And it's, it's great to see him back down there. Well, it's also great to see him pass the reins down to a junior and not only him pass the reins down um, to Harris Jr., but um, the school, the program, trusting in that family. Um, also, uh, Tim Harris Jr., uh, being a former University of Miami track athlete. So keep it in the family, keep it in the area. I mean, it's it's just one big family down here in Miami-Dade. 
Yes, it is close-knit, and it's really fantastic to be associated with the programs and empowering their young men. It's just neat to watch them grow, and, and uh, it's, it's really cool to see them all over the nation now. And uh, they'll be coming out soon. That's going to be the last play of the quarter. They'll get this punt off. It's uh, Jose does the kint kicking and a punt. It's going to be caught, and he's got some room down the he's right got hand plenty side. Room. Only the one left is Jose. He's going to get in and the he's end zone. Score. That's a touchdown on a punt return, 43 yards, and another flag is down. And you know they're going to bring this back, and it's going to break this young man's heart. Two, two touchdowns being uh, called back. Took the words out of my mouth. Two touchdowns. You know, two touchdowns. That is, you cannot, I'll say it a million times in this game, you cannot miss those type of opportunities when competing Ooh. against a high-powered Tornadoes football team. Oh, my goodness. Mental errors. Mental errors. It's 14 points brought and back. I, I think that's that's going to be end of the third quarter. Well, I don't think they can end it on a penalty, so they're going to probably get one more play out of it. I think so. With zero on the clock, we're going to change it over to fourth quarter. We hope you're enjoying the broadcast. We're enjoying being back down here in Dade County and uh, seeing these young men compete. I was fortunate enough to be down on the field beforehand. I got to talk to uh, a bunch of the coaches and a bunch of the players, watch them compete. They're gonna get one more play, won't end on a penalty for this quarter. They're at the 38 yard line and Wow, right in, in and out of the hands of the receiver. Those are weak hands, that's all that is. He gunned the ball. And I think they were going for another flea flicker. And I think if this is the end of the third quarter, we're gonna try once again, see if we can get Bobby out on the field. See if we can get that mic wired up. I'm going to want to ask Bobby, what in the world is going on down there with those two touchdowns being called back? And I know he can probably hear me right now, but he can't. We'll get the mic up. Bobby, I hear. And I think we're going to get one more play out of this. Wow. We'll head down to Bobby as soon as we break this quarter. Well, that was a personal foul, I guess. 15 yards, I wasn't paying attention to the field. I was and it's first down in a mile. We keep talking about this arm strength. He's gotta, he's gotta help us out. We're up here talking all nice about him. Well, he's got some things to prove. He's going to play in a big lead. There you go. He throws a Gosh. nice one. He does have a nice spiral. It is nice, and you know he got rid of it in two seconds, and that probably is the last play of the fourth quarter. We're going to see what the refs are doing. Refs are holding the ball up. Are they going to do it again? How many do-overs are we going to have? That is going to be the end of the fourth quarter. And we've got Bob Webster down on the field. Bobby, I got to ask you a question. Two touchdowns called back. You are on the Carroll City sideline. How in the world is the coach taking that? Well, not very well. Uh, that was an opportunity two times for them to, to get back in this game. And uh, fortunately, the laundry went on the ground and that ended those two touchdowns. 14 points wiped off. They've been working hard all night long. They've been grinding with a couple of special team players holding on to a jersey somewhere. Yeah, there it, it was it was it was heartbreaking to the team because they they've been tough all night 
couldn't get much going, and then they have those two opportunities and then taken away. How's the morale down there right now? It's, it's well, it's happy on one side and sad on the other. I just think that uh, it's... Hey, we appreciate you sending the breeze up here. Yes, we yes. Got a breeze. It's Keep it coming, brother, and we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, it's beautiful down here. Well, Chiefs got the ball back at their own 46-yard line. Going to try to run. Well, it looked like a, a screen, but there wasn't any blockers out in front of them. That's a big-time hit by these defensive players. We're going to get a dog pile on the field. And we got Booker T. Washington, Tornadoes, pointing one way. But I think he was down by contact. So. And it looks like we got a running clock on the field. And... Unfortunately, it looks like a Carroll City Chief well, they is stopped down running it. on this last play. Got, got a big hit. That was a big hit. Next week, folks, we're going to be back down here covering the Central Rockets as they meet. I have I to look at our schedule. <laughs> I have to look at the schedule, too. He was looking at me like I got it figured out. There's too much going on up here. Think about what's going on next week. I got to get through the rest of the night because my stomach is growling. <laughs> well, it is the Central Rockets back down here at Traz Pal. And uh, we're going to work on this uh, stream speed. And, and uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to get it right for you guys. Uh, it's going to be interesting to watch them. Top ranked, another top-ranked team in the nation. And it'll be a, another... Uh, Dade County team. If you want to know the rest of the schedule, all you have to do is go to hspnsports.com and go to the schedule, and you'll see the rest of the games of the season. They could change, and, and we'll we, take you all the way into the playoffs. And I was going to just add on to that. We always have the best team in the world full of sports bloggers that keep you guys updated like there's no tomorrow. I wish I had the skill and the patience to be able to sit there Lazaro, just a big shout out to you. I know you're sitting behind the computer right now. And Josh Wilson up there in Gainesville moved the operation up there. You guys are phenomenal. I mean, Bobby Jackson over at Florida Gridiron Preps and uh, Mike with uh, Florida Varsity. You guys are animals. You guys got thumbs of steel, man. Moving those, uh, I can't type that quick. But it's amazing to see what you do and the and, uh, fans you got going and just updating everybody on all the information like I said folks these are the top bloggers in the country and they're right here in South Florida and actually the middle of the state of Florida covering all of Florida well that was fourth down I'm sorry that is fourth down and they're going to punt the ball back to the tornadoes And let's see if this young man can get one off. Got a little breeze to his back. Oh, they try to oh, man. fake punt. That's or it dangerous. Was a bad snap. That is dangerous, that quarterback going in head first. Either a very bad snap or he was snapping it to the up man. Oh, I, yeah, I don't. Excuse me. That Helmets are down now. Walking off, hands on the hips. Well, not only we can understand, you know, Booker T. Washington, one of the best teams in the nation. You can understand taking a loss from the Tornadoes, but the Chiefs, they've had a tough start coming into this football season with two losses already with just under five points. I mean, how much, how much of a beating can you really take? A lot of mental errors that caused 14 points to come back off the clock. Big hit off the left-hand side. And if he's teams his feet, wow, he'd have taken it to the house. And I can only imagine uh, for the coaching staff, and being being a former coach, what are, you, what are some of the things you think Coach Aubrey, as a head coach, trying to keep that morale going for these athletes? What are the things that, I mean, I can only imagine what they're going through. Well, you got to get them back in the game. It's a long season. This is only their third game of the season. And if they don't, not careful, you know, they're going to get, uh, you know, they're already getting beat pretty bad by a crosstown rival. But 
You've got to get their you've got to get their heads in the game. You got to get them back out there. You got to build the momentum back up. And you know, Aubrey's the type of man, young man. You know, can do that. He's got that leadership. He is a chief. He's a former chief. He also went to uh, to uh, Gainesville, and they've got to get out there and do work and cut those mental errors, and that'll come from repetitions. Can't take points off the board, especially when you're playing Finney National Champion. Well, I'll tell you one thing. The Chiefs on the field may be hanging their heads low, but this band and these dancers and these cheerleaders, they're not going to give up. They are just rocking this house. I had to put my headset back on because it is loud up here. But just to... I don't know if you all are watching, but this running back that's in play right now, I believe it's 28. I believe it's number 28, but he has done some outstanding things in the past minute. It'll be Kalen Graham if it is 28. It will be I believe it might be 25. Let's see if we can get the camera guy to zoom in on the running back. Zuniga. Zuniga is 25. Zone Reed. Quarterback's going to take it around the left side. If you slow down, you're going to get hit. Picks yes, it is number 25. Yep, that's Thank you, cameraman. Zuniga. Javier Zuniga. He's a sophomore, 5'8, 160. And the band is back in the stands, and they are cranked up. Nothing like being back in Dade County just to be here with the bands, the football players, and the dancers and the cheerleaders. They do have it going on. And they duel back and forth. I know Erica, you've got daughters up in Jacksonville that are big into this stuff. Boy, oh boy. Love to see this stuff down here. Quarterback keeps it close to the goal line. Got a mark he met about the two yard line. See if that's still Taylor at quarterback, number seven. He wants to put some points on the board, too. Hey, you get the ball in your hands. You know, every time you touch the ball, you want to make a play. First and goal from the second yard line. Two yard line. Taylor gets a high snap. He's going to try the left edge, and he's in there for a touchdown. Yes, sir. And the tornadoes fire off the cannon once again here at Traz Powell Stadium. And ladies and gentlemen, with a running clock with 6.38 left, you got the tornadoes of Booker T. Washington up 44 points. Up. Oh, hold on. Excuse me. I think we have a holding call. Oh, boy on the field and we'll see in just a second what that's going to go against. Well. Two yard line and there was holding. You don't have to do much holding at the two yard line. Well that brings up first down again in goal from the 12 yard line. Wow. Chiefs are going to call timeout. So you take a timeout, we'll take a timeout as well. You're watching, folks, HSPN South Florida. Stay with us.
First down and goal after that holding. They're out at the 12-yard line. Taylor wants to get one back in the end zone for his, his team that he has out there. Zone read is not going anywhere. Lost three yards. Second down and 16. Second down and goal from the 16. Well, last time we covered the Carroll City Chiefs was our opening game for HSBN South Florida against former, I wouldn't say former, but the the Cobras of Boyd, uh, Boyd Anderson High School, Little Broward County action, headed down to Miami with Mr. Wayne Blair himself over at Island Coast. Is it Island Coast, correct? Island Coast High School, and he's doing the work over there. Yes, sir. And the Island Coast High School is actually on playing the recruiting game as well. Out there in the sticks. Over there on the West Coast by... Um, Naples, Fort Myers actually. Oh, we got an injury and he's got him off the field. Taylor's got these guys, popped it in, pulled it back out because of holding and he's going the wrong way. And now somebody either called a timeout or it's an official timeout. I'm not sure which. But we're at hovering around six minutes. 32-point lead. Once again, this is high school game day. Brought to you by Bleacher tonight. Shout out to Bleacher.com for all the graphics, putting in a lot of hard time. Brought you the impact players for tonight's game, as well as all the openers. We much appreciate the time put in from Bleacher.com. Hey. And once again, if you just tuned in for the first time, <laughs> this is Booker T. Washington and Carroll City, and you're watching it live on HSBN South Florida. Now I'm not sure if you can hear it. Ryan, you may have the mic set up where they can't hear it but they are pounding those drums. There's a fumble. Chiefs are pointing like they've got the ball. The Chiefs did recover. Well, they started it out and threw it down to the two yard line and Taylor punched it in. Fortunately, it was a hold. Ended up back out here at the 22 yard line Muffed a couple of snaps, fumbled the ball, and the Chiefs will take over at their own 22-yard line. It's a big crowd here tonight for Carroll City as well. Packed on this side. We're on Carroll City's home tonight, and the Carroll City Chiefs are packed over here. Now Booker T. Band's going to give it right back to him. Waverly throws it out here to the left-hand side, and a host of tacklers are all over him. Calvert. And once again, as we talked about those impact players, check out Carroll City's. Hadn't done their best job tonight. Steven Calvert. Steven Newbull and Ellington. Calvert's gonna give the zone read. No way, Jose, he's gonna try to get to the edge, not against Booker T. Third down and about eight yards. And Booker T, we got Maurice Alexander, quarterback tonight. We got Smalls doing work. Great, great time tonight watching him. And Big Ben, all doing a great job tonight. Tipped up in the air. Great catch by the Chiefs. Good heads up. Tornado defensive back tipped the ball up and the Chiefs receiver came down with it. Hey, Big Ben played some amazing football taking on one of the big ESPN ranked players pancaking in all the work. 
And uh, Ben came in from Jackson. And he's doing a great job over here at Booker T. Washington for the Tornadoes. Well, they got a first down on that one. Calvert sprinting out to the right side. Throws a dart into his wide receiver and it is complete. Got the tools. Needs a lot of help. Second down and one. Calvert's gonna keep it himself. Gets close to the first down. And if these rosters are up to date, it said that uh, Calvert, Stephen Calvert, the quarterback, is only a junior. So being a commit already to USF, he must have had an outstanding sophomore season. Well, they tried to power up for the first down and the back jug throws a dirty laundry and it's going to be against the Chiefs, so they're gonna have to back it up. Third down and six. That was a nice pass out there, very close to the first down. Going to be short by about a yard. To bring up fourth down, and I'm sure they're going to go for it. They're going to get back up on the ball, and I believe they got an offsides on the defense. No, it was a timeout. Oh, yes, they did get an offsides. Yep, what they called it, and they got it. That's going to run the clock. Pass incomplete out here to the left hand side. Second down and 10. Calvert's gonna throw a quick one over to the left-hand side. May get back, to, well, he scoots out and get wow. past. Great, Great job. moves, yes. Out far enough to Ellington to get enough for the first down. What a move. That was a quick screen, running back screen play to the left-hand side. And what a great move by Ellington coming up with another first down. Be careful, they get a penalty bringing the offensive player off late like that. Calvert's looking to his left again, it's wide open. Ellington get out of bounds. Taking it up the middle. Trying to rape him down with the ball. He got it down to the 20 yard line. Well, I guess at this point with the running clock, if, it doesn't matter if he goes out of bounds. That was New Bowl. One of our impact players tonight. Big first down. Alexander brings him back up. Throws it deep down the left hand side. Second down from the 20 yard line in 10. Exactly two minutes on the clock. Calvert's looking to the sideline for a play. Throws it over the middle. Oh, oh my goodness. Drop ball. That was a touchdown for sure. There's a lot of drop balls and a lot of 
A lot of miscues. You got the tools, but it doesn't matter if you have the tools and you can't use them effectively. I mean, not saying this whole game is on that wide receiver, but we have seen that again and again tonight. Well, we talked about this last week. The first couple quarters of the game, Heritage and um, and Miramar looked like they it didn't look like their third game of the year. There goes Calvert. He's going to take off and pick up about five yards until their leader came in, and it turned things around quite a bit. Brings up fourth down and four yards from very close to the 15-yard line. An empty set. Calvert's going to roll to the left and throw it quick over here. Catch is made for a first down inside the 10-yard line. They're actually going to stop the clock for him. They may be able to put on some points on the board before this game ends. I hope they do. Got a couple plays left. Calvert's looking for that quick slant. Touchdown! Eight that's yard great, slant. That's a great score. Uh, that just shows you. Doesn't matter how, what the score looks like, how far down they are. The Chiefs, that's a great play. They came up, they didn't give up. Results like, in touchdown. I like watching that, Ryan. I like the composure, watching Calvert on that drive. He put some mustard on every one of those throws. And even the one that was dropped was thrown in numbers. Looked more like a, a player that that got a uh, an offer and committed to that big of a program. And that series, um, he did very well now. Granted. Well, he hasn't given up on his team, which I think is one of the most important things. And the Chiefs are down there doing that. Tomahawk. Chiefs are going to call a timeout and talk about the extra point. Are they going to go for two? I don't know. I don't know at this point, but once again, uh, while we have some time, about a minute left in this game, we want to give a shout out to all of our sponsors and our partners tonight that have taken this game beyond the expectations. Bleacher.com. We give you a thanks to all the work that you've done. Florida Gridiron Preps. FloridaHighSchoolFootball.com. FloridaVarsity.com. The Keeping Dreams Alive Foundation. Stealth Rating. And last, and last but never least, playing the recruiting game.com. We give you thanks to all your support and we give thanks to all those that tuned in tonight from those different outlets. We thank you for your support and we are glad we can bring you live action here from South Florida. And don't miss us next week. We're gonna be right back down here, same time, same channel, watching the Central Rockets next Friday night. And they're going for two. Nice Swing throw it out. out here. Nice throw by Calvert. He's on a roll. They got the two points, Ryan. Great job. Make you feel better. Young man, Calvert, shows some poise. This series drove the team down, led the team. One drop. Ready for another kickoff, getting it back to the Tornadoes. In the Jealousy booth at the old ship, Traz Powell, Miami, North Miami, good to be back. It's a steamroll. Carroll City got a 
lesson from the number one team in the nation. And uh, Tornado's got some fresh players in, but I'll tell you that last series impressed me with Calvert. He finally looked like a player that's uh, been offered somewhere because he took the leading role and he put some mustard on the ball. A couple balls dropped, but he did what he needed to do to get him in the end zone. Absolutely. Great composure by the young quarterback. Only a junior. I hope these rosters are right because, I mean, if he's a junior and he has this commitment to University of South Florida, that means he had an outstanding sophomore season, and he has another year under his belt. Has fantastic, I mean, the, the mechanics are there. A couple things he needs to throw, stop throwing off his back foot, but he had the right people in the right place at the right time. A lot of the mistakes made tonight were based on receivers dropping balls. Yeah. And I think that goes just as well as, you know, not only does it go for the receivers, but the quarterback as well. It's a team effort, and we're not going to leave anyone out, regardless of if it's a win or a loss. Absolutely, and there was a lot of, there was two absolutely horrific penalties that didn't make an effect on the game, but it was um, two holds that brought two touchdowns back. So, you know, instead of a 14-point game, essentially 14 points were taken off, it's a 28-point game. And believe me, 38 to 28 is a lot more reasonable. They're probably going to get one more play out of this. Slide down. That was probably the last play of the game. We appreciate it, folks, being with us, especially all the sports bloggers, especially Bob Webster on the field doing that work down there and giving us some of those thoughts at the field your final thoughts ryan well expectations have been met tornadoes once again come out tonight at this dade county matchup against i mean they got plenty of rivalries but i'm going to call it a rivalry carroll city they came out tonight with high hopes they were going to come out and knock out the national champions they thought they were going to do some big things unfortunately they came up with the l tonight the tornadoes obviously doing outstanding things on both sides of the ball. I mean, I can't complain. You have outstanding wide receivers. Once again, uh, Tim Harris Jr. taking the reins for Coach Ice. Uh, I know there's big expectations out of Booker T. Coming into this year, because Coach Ice has left, I think there's a lot of pressure, but at the same time, he trusts in his athletes. Hey, when I was down there pregame and they were doing Oklahoma drills, it amazed me. They're doing Oklahoma drills, folks, before the game. And they were huddled up so nobody could see it. I took a picture of it so you can see it. This team is ready to take it to championship after championship. They got a feeder program over there that Ben Hanks with the Little League. And I think they're called the Tornadoes, too. They have 75 kids on this roster. It is going to be never ending. And what the cool thing about it is, Ryan, is a lot of these coaches that are back here we're, are from here and they're giving back and the men, the mentality, the discipline, it is all coming back to the Overtown community and it's making a profound impact in the community as well. Absolutely, once again here in the high school press box, bringing you the challenge, the jealousy windows. As you said, I'm, I'm probably too young for these things. Bringing you the jealousy windows. Once again, we thank you for tuning in to High School Programming Network. Make sure you tune in. We're, we cover it all week. We're coming to you live again this upcoming Friday, but we're bringing it to you all week because, like we said earlier on, we got the best team in the nation of sports bloggers in all of South Florida. We're bringing you high school sports every week live, whether it's Miami-Dade, whether it's Broward County, you can only expect the best coming from HSBN. And once again, this high school game day is brought to you by Bleacher.com, powered by HSBN. Thank you for tuning in tonight to tune in to the Tornadoes of Booker T. Washington and the Carroll City Chiefs. We hope you all have a great evening. Good night. He's going to snap, punt it. He's at the 40. He's at the 40. He's out of his feet.